What's going on YouTube? My name is Corey Platt and I am a U.S. Army officer and in this video I will be going over my basic training experience at Fort Benning. In this picture right here, give me right here, I am the guide on bearer which in my platoon was given to the person who scored the highest on their APFT. So without further ado, for those who are unfamiliar with the OCS for 09 Sierra process, Essentially, you have to go to a recruiter either right before you graduate college or right after and you sit down with a recruiter and you take the ASVAB. Once you've taken the test, the recruiter will then walk you through the next steps, which is essentially getting your packet together. In this packet, you will have to include your APFT, the official ASVAB score, get a, secur a security clearance, and schedule an interview slash have a board panel with captains and essentially maybe a major maybe the head of the board at the interview process it varies state by state obviously um, but pretty much once you get accepted you will get a ship date and you'll go to MEPS and you'll head to reception all right so here we are reception so now you're a specialist because um, you got your bachelor's degree right so you're going to enter in the army as a specialist You'll get your ranks and pretty much during this time before you even get this picture right your main focus during this whole period is getting all your gear issued to you um, and pretty much reception varies though person to person i personally saw that there were 18 x-rays who are um, you know special forces they're trying to go through the special forces pipeline they got shipped in within a couple of days to start their pipeline because it's you know very strict for their timeline and I saw others waiting for over two months you know just to get to basic training um, so pretty much during this time right uh, every every ounce of your time is devoted into the in processing which again is getting your uniforms your cat card your you know getting all your paperwork squared away your haircuts um, and then getting you through getting you registered through the various army systems right before you go to basic um, and pretty much I'm gonna let, I'm gonna just give this out to you so be warned that this time is very boring um, it's unadventurous you're gonna feel very unimportant you're gonna feel like a robot um, you're gonna have really early days where you might wake up at two o'clock because you know one of your they're not really battle buddies yet but one of the people in reception are you know they're they're not being attentive to the schedule maybe they're staying up they're they're walking around so the cadre they're not really drill sergeants but the cadre there you know they get pissed and they have everyone wake up and just stand in formation before you go to breakfast right <clears throat> so just follow the rules you know it's going to be very boring you just got to understand this is part of the process you try to keep positive have a positive mindset and attitude <clears throat> and for the 09 Sierra class though, for, for my class specifically, we were rushed through the process mainly because of our timeline as well, because we had we had to go through basic training just to get to OCS, right? And it's all together. So there is no, you know, you can't have a lag there because then you, you miss timelines, right? So I think for me, it was only, it only took about a week and then we were shipped onto the bus and we went to basic training. floor at the floor running I don't know if they still do shark attacks anymore last I heard I think they kind of got away with that but I was pretty much going through this phase of you know you hear like this mortar fire which is just you know there's like big big loud booms and the drill sergeants getting your face yelling at you you know rushing you into the formation area and then you're just doing a bunch of pull up or uh, push-ups you know you're having to hold the, the bags that you got over your head and just they're yelling at you it's very chaotic and dramatic but once you're in, you know, this is this picture was taken obviously at the end of basic training when you actually get your phone. It's like the last day or whatever it was. So I just wanted to capture all the different photos and, and show, you know, my future self and those viewers watching. Like, you know, this is kind of what to expect. This is an example of how your bed will look like. You'll have to make it every day. And you cannot sit on it unless you're sleeping. If you get caught on your bed, you and your peers, aka your platoon, will be subjected to a smoke session and likely the rest of your platoon 
will hate you. <laughs> that would be a bad experience, um, so don't do that. Displayed on this bunk bed um, was for the trainees. Uh, it's just for the uh, APFT scores. Um, for me, you know, I was battle roster number 333 or 338, as you can see. You know, I consistently scored pretty well, like on my APFT scores. Um, so it's very, it's manageable. Like I said, just you know, if you watch my videos, um, obviously my first APFT, you know, right there, you can see 82 push-ups, 81 sit-ups, 1310. Uh, run time for my two mile so you know that was that was like civilian Corey right like that was still the same you know like I was the same person from all my civilian training leaning up and I almost maxed the first APFT you know and the first APFT they're definitely a lot more strict on uh on the standards because they, they they want to see you know perfection with with your push-ups perfection with the sit-ups they're not gonna they're not gonna hold back because it's also your first one right so they can be very strict and methodical in their approach whereas if you you know if they if they don't if they lack on the standards now they're like you get trainees who think that you know a correct push-up is is going you know like three quarters of the way down whereas you know other drill sergeants would be like no that doesn't count so the first one definitely sets the stone for a lot of people um, and you, you progressively get better because now you practice that standard throughout the whole time on your off time with your battle buddies you know on the weekends you're you're practicing you're lifting possibly because some you know some platoons some platoon bay areas may have weights um, and, and it's really motivational because you're, you're gonna have a lot of downtime on the weekends especially and a lot of people will just you know practice push-ups you know just write letters and and it's really it's really a nice time like I think personally looking back it was a valuable experience because you got to really see yourself and self discover your, yourself and, and see how you would react in an environment where you don't have outside influence you don't have a phone you don't have technology around you you're truly just trying to get through this challenge of graduating basic training day by day you know, looking for the, looking forward to the, the next day because you're one step closer to graduating and starting your journey, right? Because this is all just training. So, without further ado, you know, this is this is pretty much what you're gonna expect. You see those uh, those corners gonna be flush. They're gonna be squared away. You're gonna have you know your locker room as well. That's gonna be squared away. You're not gonna have you know every cubby is gonna have something specifically designated in that space. Otherwise, you will be smoked for having something that's not supposed to be there in there. When the drill sergeant comes through and is like, all right, we're, we're doing bay inspections, open up the lockers, and they just walk through. And if it's messed up, they're going to throw all your stuff in the middle of the bay, and you're all going to get smoked. <laughs> and that's, that's how it is. <laughs> this is the bathroom area, right? Or AKA latrines. You may, be, you may hear this term a lot, latrines, when you're on the range, you're at the FTX, or whatever, what have you. Pretty much, this is the same thing, right? You will be expected to keep the latrines spotless. If there are any deficiencies in this cleaning area, you will be subjected to a smoke session with the platoon by your drill sergeants, and your platoon members will again dislike you. So please, for yourself, and for those who are about to go to basic training with you, just remember this, use deodorant, flush the toilets, clean up after yourself in all matters that you could possibly think of. Um, pretty much, I mean, it's, it's like, imagine you're visiting someone's home, right? And this person that you're visiting is very bougie, right? Which, which also means like, for those of you who don't know what bougie means, it just means, you know, they're like high class. Like you're visiting, you're visiting the president, right? And you're going to use the president's bathroom. Do you think that it would be acceptable to leave the the toilet in a manner in which the president himself would not want to use the toilet? If if the answer is no, you probably want to clean it. Um, and that's kind of a mindset that. If you do, if you have that mindset during this time, like you're gonna be, you're gonna be fine, right? Like you're not gonna get your platoon messed up because at the end of the day, your actions, this this whole process goes to show you that your individual actions 
will affect your platoon, right? And that's the kind of mindset that they're trying to engrave into you during this training process. So do yourself a favor by doing your platoon a favor and just making sure that everything is cleaned, squared away, and you're not trying to disrupt anyone's, you know, peace. Because this, this is going to be a challenging this is going to be a challenging process for a lot of people. A lot of people have never been, you know, outside on their own. You know, especially if you just came out of high school, you're new from your, you know, you just first time experience something outside of high school and being and being uh, at home with your parents. This is like a new environment. They're trying to trying to set that standard and that tone initially for the rest of your for the rest of your career for the rest of your life. This is life skills that they're trying to mold and, and innovate into your, your well-being that you cultivate for the rest of your life. So just look at it like, like look at it that way, right? Like you're going to, you're going to basic training, you're going through the army, for whatever your motivations may be, at the end of the day, they're trying to train you and teach you to do something that will only benefit you. So just follow their instructions and, and attention to detail is key. Alright, so next up, this is the living area entrance on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, this left picture is pretty much the the bay, like the bay area. You see where that blue tape is? So initially, right, when you go in, when you go into your bay, you're gonna all line up all around that bay area. The only only person who's authorized inside of that blue tape at any time, doesn't matter, doesn't matter if it's a weekend, a Sunday, doesn't matter at any time, the only person who's authorized inside that rectangle is your drill sergeants. And when you go through, right, and you're going to be, you know, it's time to get, it's time for your smoke session. They're going to say, toe the line. Toe the line means you're going to go on that blue tape right there in the, the, the battle roster number order. Doesn't matter. You could be at the far right inch, uh, far right bunk. If your battle, battle roster is number 201 and it's all the way at the other side of the bay, guess what? You better be running to the other side of the bay to toe the line because if you don't is going to count down he or she or might have their might they may have their own approach to how they do it but for for us it was you just count down if you weren't there by the time you count it down it's going to be even longer it's going to be a longer smoke session so instead of doing 10 push-ups you're going to be doing flutter kicks you're going to be doing uh, plank holds you're going to be doing mountain climbers you're going to be doing put you're going to be doing extra push-ups right and that's that's kind of you know that's kind of what to expect, especially initially, like after your your shark attack, like you just got to you know you just got to uh, to your formation to your formation area, and they're gonna start following you through your platoon bay. So this is your platoon bay. You're gonna get up. You're gonna toe the line. Just expect they're gonna be giving you a smoke session. Everyone, it doesn't matter. Everyone just just to set the stone. That's just what they do. They're gonna set the stone straight straight out the gate, and that's what they're gonna do. So obviously the the uh, the platoon bay is going to vary by duty station and by platoon, uh, but typically you're going to help you're going to have weapons racks as you can see on this left hand picture to the left side next to that flagpole. That that's going to be where your rep weapons racks are going to be located, um, and pretty much you're going to have to pull fire guard, which is just means that you're going to be watching weapons. This is essentially like staff duty for, you know, for those of you who, who aren't familiar with the basic training concepts or whatever, but it's, it's staff duty. You're just, you have people stationed at the desk watching for any kind of emergency. Um, and then if there is an emergency, they're going to, you know, run to the drill sergeant, bang on his door, whatever, let him know like, hey, you know, we got an emergency and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Furthermore, as you can see in these pictures, right, you will have anywhere from 25 to 30 bunks, and this is to house everyone in the platoon that you will get to know, and during this time, obviously, you're going to get to know them very well, and in this uh, picture to my right, in my platoon base specifically, my drill sergeant was pretty cool. Uh, he had, you know, weights for everybody, so like, like I said, like on the weekends, like on Saturday, you could go and you can use those kettlebells to start doing curls, you know, doing front raises. They had rollers there too, you know, to stretch out. So it was it was fun. Like it was it was great that 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 drill sergeant thought of that um, and had that in there implemented for the trainees. 
because again like on the weekends like especially if you if you don't go to church but even if you go to church right you're going to have some downtime in between the child sessions that you're going to be wanting to do something because you can't go anywhere right so this is like your this is like your living space for the next you know two months right so well two and a half months but yeah so and then here's an example of what the formation area looks like. So when you get off the bus, you know, they're yelling at you, they're screaming at you. You know, you're going to you're going to orient yourselves into the different platoons. So on the far on the far left of this picture, right? That's like fourth platoon. The white line is third platoon. Second uh, the blue line right there is second platoon. And then the first line you can't see in this picture, but that'd be first platoon, right? Um, and then you just pretty much, you guys all form up into your squads. You know, you see there's four lines, there's four squads, right? And then each of the colors, as I said, they're going to represent different platoons, so you can't really mess that up. Um, and then you will always be expected to show up to this area on time for PT, which will be early in the morning, uh, be anywhere from you know 05, 05, 15, whatever time it is, whatever time they tell you PT is, they're going to let you know. They're going to post a schedule. You're, you're, it's predictable, right? Like you're going to know each day what you're going to be doing in advance um, for all your child formations right for breakfast lunch and dinner they're gonna this is going to be the expected time that you have to show up um, and then for ranges for FTXs FTXs means field training exercises this is when you go to the field you know you're doing your platoon slash company um, training events or if you're going to the shop at right so if you're going to the shop at shop at is Pretty much when you're trying to get like a haircut, you're trying to get like a, uh, sometimes on Sundays, they'll give you like an opportunity to go to, uh, if you want, they'll make it optional where, you know, you have to get a resupply for your shaving, um, shaving supplies, you know, toothpaste, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you can take advantage of that, but there's going to be a time where you need to form up and you have to meet that time hack. Um, if you don't show up on time, you will again have your platoon in formation, doing push-ups, waiting for you to come down, and they will again dislike you. And you don't really, you don't want to be disliked because at the end of the day, right? Like it's just you, right? It's just you, and it's not so much about this whole idea of likership, but it's more so the idea of it's a team. So if you're doing, if you're constantly messing up. You're just hurting the team, and then you also you got to think too is the bigger picture. Your your platoon is competing against the other platoons in the company, and you get these banners on your your guidons. And the more banners you get, you get recognized for that. That could be, hey, maybe you get your your cell phone. You know, a couple of days before they normally issue them out, or you get more time on your cell phones. Your your drill sergeants will allow you to do that because your platoon is squared away. You won the the line nav challenge. You won the PT challenge. You won you know the weapons marksmanship challenge for you know whatever they have. <clears throat> they have a, a series of different banners and challenges that your platoons can compete for. And the stronger the bond of your platoon, of your teams, the better you guys are going to do overall when it comes to these challenges. And plus, it helps build morale, right? This is, this is going to be a challenging time for people. So having that, that, that tightness, that bond is, is essential for getting through it mentally. And it helps you and your team get through it mentally. So you just got to, you got to think about that your battle buddies, you got to think about the platoon and, and, the, and the, the whole picture of the platoon. And you just got to, you know, you got to have that positive mindset. That's going to help get you through this. All right. Tell me guys, what would you guys like next? Uh, subscribe, like, and comment below. I'm definitely going to be having a OCS specific video to talk about the different phases. You know, the black, white, blue ASCOT phases. Um... And then if you want anything more specific in this, you know, army basic training slash, you know, reception, um, just let me know. Uh, I can definitely make some more videos or hit you up personally in the comment section below. 
um, just to give you guys a better idea. I know like on Facebook, I follow a lot of groups like OCS, like an OCS club that kind of goes and there's a bunch of people that ask questions on there. So you can always look at different social media outlets that give you some more insight on it. Um, but this was just me specifically. If you're, you know, planning on going to basic training and Fort Benning, you're going through the 09 Sierra process, definitely this this content is going to be tailored to you. But it also is going to be pretty relatively the same for a lot of other people as well. Um, I think Fort Benning does a great job in their basic training. And I, I mean, I couldn't, I wouldn't be here without it. So and I've, I've, I'm have i just thankful that I've gone through all this, all this training and all this all these processes to lead me to the, to the point where I am today. So, you know, that's my main motivation on want, wanting to post, you know, a video tailored to my roots into this army career that I have. So yeah, just let me know what you guys would like next and thank you for watching.